Hello, blessed Mary, heaven's beauteous lily, for thy love has favored you, Mother of all mercy. Through the birth of your dear Son, who would bring redemption, Mary, you were favored, graced beyond the angels, made above all maidens, holiest of women. Pray for us, O Blessed One, Mother God's own true Son. Mother, you were chosen, blessed among all women, by the God of heaven, author of salvation, hope of all who on you call, pray, O Mother, for us all. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, bless us with the wisdom to praise you in spirit and in truth, so that by following your holy will, we may gain eternal salvation. Peace be with you. Let us pray. Gracious Father, speak your precious word to us, that we may celebrate the coming of your Son with joy. He has come, he is in our midst, and he will come again. We ask this through the same Jesus Christ, our your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord spoke to Ahaz, saying, Ask for a sign from the Lord your God. Let it be deep as the netherworld, or high as the sky. But Ahaz answered, I will not ask. I will not tempt the Lord. Then Isaiah said, Listen, O house of David, is it not enough for you to weary people? Must you also weary my God? Therefore the Lord himself will give you this sign. The virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and name him Emmanuel. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response for our psalm today, Let the Lord enter. He is the King of glory. The Lord's are the earth and its fullness, the world and those who dwell in it. For he has founded it upon the seas, and established it upon the rivers. Let the Lord enter, he is the King of glory. Who can ascend the mountains of the Lord, or who can stand in his holy place? One whose hands are sinless, whose heart is clean, who desires not what is vain. Let the Lord enter. He is the King of glory. He shall receive a blessing from the Lord, a reward from God his Savior. Such is the race that seeks him, that seeks the face of the God of Jacob. Let the Lord enter. He is the King of glory. A reading from the letter of St. Paul the Apostle to the Romans. Paul, a slave of Christ Jesus, called to be an apostle and set apart for the gospel of God, which he promised previously through his prophets in the Holy Scriptures, the gospel about his son, descended from David according to the flesh, but established as son of God in power, according to the spirit of holiness, through resurrection from the dead, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through him we have received the grace of apostleship, to bring about the obedience of faith for the sake of his name among all the Gentiles, among whom you are also, 
who are called to belong to Christ Jesus, to all the beloved of God in Rome, called to be holy. Grace to you and peace from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. The virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel. Alleluia, alleluia. Cleanse my heart and my lips, Almighty God. <coughs> and you cleanse the lips of the prophet Isaiah with a burning coal. In your mercy, cleanse me, that I worthily proclaim your holy gospel through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Lord be in my heart and on my lips, that I worthily proclaim his holy gospel. Amen. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory be to you, Lord. This is how the birth of Jesus Christ came about. When his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found with child through the Holy Spirit. Joseph, her husband, since he was a righteous man, yet unwilling to expose her to shame, decided to divorce her quietly. Such was his intention when, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary, your wife, into your home. For it is through the Holy Spirit that this child has been conceived in her. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. When Joseph awoke, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him, and took his wife into his home. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My brothers and sisters, I greet you once again. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, may Jesus Christ be praised now and forever. Amen. In this last week of the Advent season, we are in our remote preparations for the Nativity of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And in today's Holy Gospel, we read of Matthew's infancy narrative, how the birth of Jesus Christ came about. And in particular, we hear the prophecy of <coughs> Isaiah, who said that the virgin would conceive and bear a son, they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. And even earlier, we know that in the same vein, Joseph has said that he will, is to name this child Jesus, the name which means God saves. So God is with us and God saves in the person of Jesus Christ. But we can ask, why do we focus so intently on this Gospel reading as a remote preparation for Christmas? And we hear also this same prophecy given in the book of Isaiah. It mentions the prophet in the Gospel reading, and we know Isaiah is that prophet. And in his seventh chapter, he gives this same prophecy to Ahaz. Is it not enough for you to weary people, Isaiah says to Ahaz? Must you also weary my God? Therefore the Lord himself will give you this sign, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall name him Emmanuel. One thing that is not explicit here, though, is in fact the most important part of this gospel reading. Ahaz did not accept this prophecy. Ahaz was the king of Judah, and he had made a very human alliance with the Assyria, and he put his trust in human things. And therefore, 
Relying that human things would save him, he would not tempt God. I will not ask, Ahaz says, I will not tempt the Lord. He thought that human things would save him, and they did not. Isaiah gave him this prophecy, and we, in reflecting on this today, can compare Ahaz then, who relied on human things, with Joseph in today's gospel. Joseph was maybe rightly concerned. He had been betrothed to Mary, a much more serious relationship than, say, an engagement would be in today's world. In fact, they are spoken of here as being already married. Joseph, her husband, it says. And Mary is referred to as his wife. So they are, in an essence, already married, although they had not yet lived together. He was concerned that Mary was found with child. We can surmise that although this may have come as a surprise to Joseph, he might have gone to Mary to ask. She might have told him about the visit of an angel. But he was perplexed, to say the least. He received this same prophecy. <clears throat> and the angel said to him, Do not be afraid to take Mary into your home. It is through the Holy Spirit this child has been conceived in her. And the realization of the fulfillment of the prophecy, Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel. Two different responses to this prophecy of the Lord Ahaz, who put his trust in things human, and Joseph, who puts his trust in God. I can imagine that Joseph did not fully understand. Remember, he does not have 2,000 years of reflection and prayer and theological reasoning as we do today, but he trusted God. The angel came to him in a dream, God's messenger in a dream, and told him to take Mary into his home. And so he did. We trust in Almighty God. My brothers and sisters, as in this last week, we prepare ourselves to encounter our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ as the holy infant of Bethlehem, we are called to place our trust there as well. To place our trust in God that this child will save us from our sins. All that he is, all that he does, from the very first moments of his birth to his death, his resurrection, his ascension into heaven, every moment of his life, he accomplishes our salvation, and that we are called to trust in God who gave Jesus to us and accomplishes our salvation through him. We are called to be trusting as Joseph was. As we focus our attention, my brothers and sisters, on Joseph, let us be those ones who like St. Paul, calls himself a servant, a slave of Christ Jesus, an apostle and set apart. My brothers and sisters, we too are called to be servants of Christ Jesus, slaves of Christ Jesus, to accomplish his will, his word, his actions in our world today. We are called to be apostles in the sense that we <clears throat> spread the word of God in how we live our lives and how we work together and treat each other. We are set apart for the gospel of God in that we will not participate in the lowly things of the world that surround us. We will be raising our eyes, our voices to Almighty God, our lives to Almighty God to follow 
to live in union with his Son here in this world and in the world to come. My brothers and sisters, we are called to be like Paul. We are called to be like Joseph. One who puts our trust in God. First and foremost, yes, but in fact, put our trust only in God. Let us, my brothers and sisters, as we prepare in these last few days for the solemnity of the birth of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, trust in God, and glorious things will be done for us through the birth of his Son. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. Blessed be the name of the Lord, now and forever. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.